So tonight we are looking at the topic, feeling unappreciated, feeling unappreciated. When you read the banner, what came to mind? I don't know what came into your mind, but tonight that is where the Spirit of God is um, leading us and wants to teach all of us as believers. And we are not restricting this topic to cover issues in our homes or our relationships with our husbands, but it will go beyond that. The discussion will go beyond that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It will go beyond our spouses to or our husbands to our relationship with everyone that the Lord brings our way. Sisters, cousins, aunties, in-laws, colleagues, strangers, our own children. You know, sometimes we do we do things for them, or not sometimes, most of the times. The way we help, the way we interact, the way we work, whether in deeds or in words or in um, substance, we do things for people. We relate, even in the office. We do so much and we have expectations that we will be rewarded according to what we do for people. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way, you know. Our expectations are not met. When that happens, how do we feel? You help a sister and the sister along the line treats you in a way that you feel disappointed. You are working so hard in the office and your boss is not appreciating you. Opportunities come and he is giving it to other colleagues of yours. You help a brother, you help a sister. You stood by your husband in difficult times, only for him to, you know, sometimes, to put it in quotes, disappoint you. You believe you are doing your best in the home and your mother in law law or your in-laws or whoever or your husband thinks you are not doing much. You are giving your all to your children, yet they are not appreciating you. So as believers, whichever area Christ has called us to save, whether in the office or wherever, there are times that we feel like we are not getting value for what we are given. And what are we expected to do as godly women when our efforts appear unseen or unappreciated by the people the Lord brings our way to save, both in the home and outside the home? What do we do? What should we do? Tonight, the Spirit of God is with us. He will guide us into all truth. And so, sisters, rest assured, the Holy Ghost will teach us. And before we Allow the Spirit of God to teach us. Let's praise our Father for a moment. Remember our Father is King. And we love to exalt Him before we do anything. And so we'll invite our sister Belinda to kindly lead us, minister to us, or lead us in the ministration. I will encourage you to sing along wherever you are and celebrate your father. Sister Belinda, kindly take over if you are available, please. Thank you so much, Auntie Chloe. God bless you. Good evening, sisters. Um, sorry for the background. I think there are some um, brass band walking around, so I, I'm sure they will pass by briefly. Um, we just want to thank God for grace. We thank God for mercy. We thank God for the opportunity that we are alive. Um, looking at today's date is 25th, and we know that it's the last Saturday in the month of November in 2023. The journey hasn't been easy. It has been the grace of God, has been by the mercies of God, and we are grateful. I just want to sing, there's a tree song that's been on my heart, and it's a simple song. It says that Ebenezer, Nyamina Dumaraqua, he says that Ebenezer, it's just by the grace of God. Nyame is God. 
and then Adom is grace. So it's just by the grace of God that we will remember. So if you haven't been feeling well, the sickness that you are you you have recovered from, it is just by the grace of God that we are alive. So that's just just a simple song that I'm going to sing. My heart is full of gratitude to you no one else but you oh lord i'm here only by your grace thank you jesus for not giving up on me oh my heart lord it's full of gratitude to you lord and no one else but you. I'm here only by your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me. Oh, always there, See how far you brought me. Is there, I'm so glad you found me worthy, Lord. I can see, I can tell, and I know, Lord, it's your grace all my days. I will sing your praise. Oh, Ezebube, see how far you brought me. Ezebube. I'm so glad you found me worthy, Lord. I can see and I can tell. And I know, Lord, it's your grace all my days. I will sing your praise. Hear this. Grace found me. Grace saved me. Grace made me. Who I am, grace redeemed me, grace sustains me, grace made me who I am. You can testify, grace found me, grace saved me, grace made me who I am, grace redeemed me, grace sustains me, grace made us who we are so we can say we can see we can tell and we know lord is your grace all our days we will sing your praise oh see how far you've brought us lord is it we are so glad you found us worthy we can see lord we can tell and we know lord it's your grace all our days we will sing your praise oh we can see we can tell and we know lord it's your grace all my days we will sing your praise oh and then 
see how far you brought us, Lord. Ezebube. We are so glad you found us worthy. I'm so glad, Lord, you have found us worthy, Lord. Oh, Ezebube. See how far you brought us. Ezebube. We are so glad you found us worthy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace. All my days, I will sing your praise. Standing here, oh Lord, not knowing how to get through this test. Oh Lord, holding on. On to faith we know best. So, nothing can catch you by surprise. You got it. You figured out. Now we know that you made a way. Oh, Lord, when our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Oh, Lord, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way oh we say you move mountains cause walls to fall with your power you performed miracles there is nothing Oh, that's impossible, Lord, and we're standing here only because you made a way. Oh, and we're standing here, Father, only because you made a way. Lord, we trust you and we're standing here only because you give. You made a way. Father, we are grateful for how far you have brought us. We are grateful for your mercies. We are grateful. We want to say thank you for how far you have brought us. And we stand in here only because, Lord, you made a way. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, Sister Belinda. We thank the Lord for how far he has brought us indeed today is a special day a special day that father is meeting you and i to teach us again every day is special to him before we call our sister nanaya to um, share with us i want us to encourage ourselves with this scripture act 17 the emphasis will be on 28 but i want us to take it from 20 6 it says that from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands god did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him Though he is not far from any one of us. Verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. So whether we are asleep, whether we are praying, whether we are awake, whether we are working, whatever we do, we live in him. We are able to move in him. From January till now, it has been his grace and his mercy and his power. It is by his power that when we wake up from bed, 
we can put our feet down, stand up and walk. The Bible says we live in him and move in him and have our being, our very existence emanates from him. We have gathered here to listen to him. What is the godly woman supposed to do when her efforts appear unseen or unappreciated by the people she is serving in and outside the home? We are here to learn from the Holy Spirit, sisters. I want to emphasize, we are here to learn from the Holy Spirit. Let each and every one of us open our hearts to him in your corner. Talk to him about the areas where he will be drawing your attention to so that you and I will be blessed. Sister Nanaya, I know the Lord has spoken through you, has prepared you to share with us. Please, if you are ready, kindly take over. Sister Nanaya, if you are ready, kindly take over and share what the Lord lays on your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Pell. And hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's great to be here this evening with you. Um, yes, Pell, I didn't say anything when you said you had missed me, but I, I have to. It's been interesting and it's not a time to moan. In fact, it's a time to praise God. It's been an interesting few, few months for me going back to school in September and it's been very hectic but God is faithful. Let us pray. Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this opportunity to come here again to share. Lord we thank you for everybody who is here. Father we thank you for every who is also at the Ghana retreat. Lord as you bless them over there wherever you teach them Lord may it infiltrate into our lives because they'll come back and share with us all the great things that you did. Father, I pray that, Lord, may the meditations of my heart and everything that I speak be acceptable to you, O oh God, my rock and my salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, sisters, to, tonight is more, um, I will share how far God has brought me. And then... I am praying and hoping that a few of you will also rise up and also speak on, on this topic. So um, Sister Pearl and I are counting on the fact that the Holy Spirit will raise an army of, of people who would share on this. So um, here we go. I'm, I'm, I tend to be a person of not many words. Well, it depends really, because sometimes too, I can talk and talk and talk and sometimes I wonder. But here we go. So the question was, what does a godly woman do when her efforts seem unappreciated? When her efforts seem unappreciated. So <laughs> when um, I was asked by Sister Pearl, I was like, okay, I know I've grappled with this in the past. I've grappled with, um, can you not see um, all that I'm doing? Am I not appreciated? I had resentments and a lot of it was towards people who I believed were not helping. My attitude was foul towards colleagues at work who I deemed as lazy and not chipping in. It was, it was aimed at my own siblings. It was aimed at my husband who I deemed as unhelpful and sometimes even at my own children, especially when they were younger. And has been directed, most importantly, at God, who at some point, I will say, sisters, I have not seen as not, as not being supportive at all. God, you are not supporting me. God, you are not helpful. As the issues I used to complain and worry about were still there. So I also had a case against God, too, because God wasn't also doing his job right. So let's get this right. I as a person, I'm mourning about people. I'm now mourning about God because who am I? I wonder, am I God myself? Or <laughs> am I better than all the people I'm mourning about? You see, as I looked deep into my heart a few years ago, I realized that there were two things in, in this particular standpoint. There are two places you can stand. A place where you stand and you say, it's all about me. It's all about me. It is me they are not helping. 
So you see, when you stand at that point, you see how selfish you are. It's called the selfish view and standpoint. And then you can stand at a place where you judge them. They are not helping me because you have judged them not to be helpful. You have now become a judge. I mean, in a courtroom, at least there's a judge, there's a jury, and then they pronounce a sentence, but you have become judge and jury, of which I had become judge and jury. And therefore, I stand at a place of judgment. So a place, a place of selfishness and a place of judgment. Wow, that's where we stand. The moment we start to see things, and you might have, you might have um, a good, a good reason why you're saying what you're saying in terms of not getting help. But um, on this platform, we are here about renewing our minds. We are here to renew our minds, to renew our thinking, so that we would renew it and become as godlike as we can be. So let's look at me. In my selfish point of view, when I was really selfish, in my judgmental point of view, when I was really judgmental. So I teach, and a few a few people know that I do. And um, in the past, I can easily think because I love to create my own worksheets. I love to create things. I mean, I pride myself in creativity, and I tailor make it to suit my students. I'm a better teacher than the others who serve the internet to get resources. Why, why do I even think that? Well, I don't know, but I thought that. I would share these resources with the bus department and nobody else except for one person, to be fair, Mike. Mike will create stuff and also send it back to me. But otherwise, out of a department of 15 math teachers, probably two creative people, and that's the, that's the end of it. So I deemed them as being unhelpful at all. They are unhelpful. Blah, 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 blah. My self-appointed task of judge and jury makes me think that the rest are not pulling their weight because I am standing in as judge and jury from my point of view. So they are not pulling their weight. It's hard to be in that position where you give yourself that role. Because if you are judge, you are jury, very soon you have to be the one who has to be the prison attendants, putting people into prison and also watching over them so they don't escape. So you start to create a big job for yourself. It's a huge task that you start to, to create. You create a job for yourself. So let's look at my home life. My husband used to... Um, well, he still does. Um, works. He works in IT, and he spends long hours working on his laptop because of the job he does. And it takes a while. And because it takes a while, I used to resent the hours he sat and he worked and worked and worked. And it's not like he worked and he didn't get paid for. Um, I was coming from the point of view that. Well, I go to work, then I come back and I feed children and I do this and I do that. So I'm looking at the point of view, not because of anything, but basically judge and jury again. And the number of times I moaned that I was not getting help, you have no idea. Umwame, won't you help me? Won't you help me? Umwame. Blah, 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 on and on and on because I'm standing in the place of myself. It's all about me. It's all about me. Even my daughters, ah, I've put the, we've put them into so many things. They are going to ballet, they are doing piano, they are doing this. They are in schools where they push them. They are doing homework, they are exhausted. Um, the other things I won't mention, but I'll say that even them, sometimes I used to resent, but they are lying down, relaxing, like, hey, so me, Kra, does anybody help me? The only thing that mattered was that I was the one who had no help. Remember, it's all about the selfish point of view. I, in fact, my hard work sometimes got ridiculed, I thought. I had a distant family member say to me, 
because they they came to visit and they stayed there for a short while. And I had to keep on top of things. Otherwise, um, I I felt that my house was, my, our home environment will break down in terms of how it looked and so on. So she said something to me in Cree and I will, I will say it in Cree and then I'll explain it in English because we are not all Ghanaians and we are not all Cree speakers. Nanaya, would dear Mata Mata Yin Kwa? Which means, Nanaya, your viewpoint is always doing all this Mata Mata work. That's all you do. My sharp response and still inward looking at the time was, Mary Magdalene. I said, help me so that we can all be Martha. Then we can all be Mary Magdalene. Because I was quite upset. You're not doing anything. You're doing anything. Yet, you're busy. Um, you're busy um, telling me and using the Bible as a bashing tool to hit me over the head with. I mean, how helpful is it for somebody to come and tell you that you are being a Martha or you are being a Mary Magdalene or you are being whatever, whatever. So um, it's kind of really, really difficult. And with that in mind, I'm thinking, okay, I've got, I've got a few word, choice words for you too. But it's funny. You know, it's really, really, really funny. At times I felt I needed to throw in the towel and give up. It had taken me years of struggling to get to the point where I am now able to share with you. I'm now able to share deep things with you because I've walked a walk that has made me able to say, okay, now this part of me is gone, which is fantastic. So um, I've got a Bible study leader and I really, really enjoy doing my Bible study on Sundays. And um, currently, entering, well, I've gone past my, I mean, my third year of doing this Bible study with that person. And I remember the moments I joined that Bible study, on top of all the things I think that I'm responsible for, he makes me class prefect over there. Nanaya, you've got to do this. Nanaya, you've got to do that. Nanaya, you've got to do that. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I spoke to him one day and I said, you know, you've given me all this task over here. It's a lot. And then I've got this much to do. And then he said to me, Nanaya, to whom much has been given, much is required. I was like, uh-oh. Um, it kept me quiet for a bit. And then I realized, uh oh right. Gosh, I did not realize Actually, I didn't see myself as one who has been given much. I didn't see it at all. Did I even see the talents that were in my hand? Mm, no. Is that why I always found myself in roles that demanded more and more of me because much has been given? Gosh, some more sisters. Let's look at this from the point of view of much has been given. Because if we are going to sit here this evening and just moon, I'm sure we'll find a, 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 a huge river of moons. But that's not the point. The point is to come and renew our minds. So we are going to look at this from the angle of the good and faithful servant. So we're going to open God's word. I'm going to read it so that we can get through this. This is not like marriage school or whatever school where... Um, um, I'll interject and, and, and bother people, but I'm hoping that people will also come up with stories afterwards. So, so um, it's Matthew 25, 14 to 30. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. For, I'm reading the ESV translation. So it's for it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. 
he who had received the five talents went at once and traded them and traded with them and he made five talents more so also he who had two talents made two talents more but he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money now after a long time the master of the, those servants came and settled accounts with them and he who had received the talents came forward bringing or saying master you delivered to me five talents here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will over the story of your master. Capel, if you can help me with unmuting, or if you can give um some permissions to other people to help. So um Five talents more. I have forgotten where I got to, but I think I got to 17. So also, who, so also, he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents here. I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had received two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He, he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, master, I know you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you know I you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received what was my own with interest so take the talent from him and give it to him who had ten talents for to everyone who had who has will more be given and he will have an abundance but from the one who has not even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servants into the outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth Hmm. So there it starts with God giving talents according to our ability. This is deep, sisters. You think about it. God gives talents according to your ability. I have been given talents because God himself has deemed it that I have the ability. It is God who has deemed it right to give me that talent because he thinks I have the ability, because he has made me. So I'm going to pause. We are going to rewind again. I, think about yourself. I have been given talents because God himself has deemed it that I have the ability. I will say it again. Think about yourself. I have been given talents because God himself has deemed it that I have that ability. Hey, I have talents. Instead of using them proudly to glorify God, so, so plenty, plenty, plenty mourning and prideful talking 
and just plain and grateful as what God has entrusted me with. Hey. So now the topic we started with was that when you feel uh, where you feel like you don't have the help that you need or you feel blah 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 i don't know question is why are you mourning question is who is your helper who is your helper how do i help who who will i help why don't i get help all the help I have already been given, oh, God has given me the help. The help is in my hands. It's in the hands of the talents that he gave me. And then he's giving me his Holy Spirit. But he's giving me everything I need. I've got the help. I have been wired with talents by the Almighty Father himself. He's wired it into me. I've been wired with solutions, plenty. Everything is under his control. He's almighty. He has put me in the position that I currently am in. And all I do is moan. I have not gone to him for solutions and ways to use those talents. But I go to him and actually complain that my boss is like this, my husband is like this, my children is like this, I'm not appreciated. And um, hang on a minute. I even go to him and tell him that he's not doing his job right because all the problems are still there. So my question is, am I going to dig the ground and put it in it? Or better not dig the ground and put it in it? That digging of the ground scenario, sisters, is uh, deep. It's deep stuff. The digging the ground includes, I get no help, so I won't even bother to do this. That's one dig. You put it in. I get no help, so I'm stopping digging more. I am not appreciated because the appreciation does not come in the way that I want it. So, Charlie, it's clear that I better stop all this. I'm digging, I'm digging. Lots of I, 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 sisters is floating around. And then the one hiding in the background, that's one hiding in the background, telling me that my thoughts are true. The friend we don't want, Lucifer himself, is jumping in glee because the ground has been dark or is being dark to put my talents in it. He is laughing because he knows that, truthfully, the master is going to come. So Lucifer is absolutely laughing. But these talents were given so that they could be used. The using of them can almost invariably cause or create a, a multiplication effect. The more mm -hmm. they are used, the more mm -hmm. they get the use of them then causes others to marvel listen no, others look at you using those talents you think that it's it's all about not being appreciated though, but somebody's looking somebody's looking and they are marveling and then they are going to god in prayer asking for the talents that you are moaning about they are asking god for it all of a sudden, your talents that you think that you're not being appreciated for, you don't know, but it's become somebody's prayer topic. Sheesh. It's become somebody's prayer topic. Let me just show you a scenario. You are at home. You are struggling. You know, you are busy cleaning all the time. You are putting things in order. You are ironing. You are cooking. You are doing this. You are doing that. But let me tell you what others see. When your family gets out, others watch about, oh, look at them. They are so well put together. Look at the whole family. Their clothes are ironed, but you they don't know who's doing all this plenty ironing, but you are moaning. So what are they doing? 
Others are busy going down on their knees. Please, Lord, give me a family like that person's. Your children are doing well in school, but people don't know how you are cutting them up and down, classes here, there, everywhere. They come home, you are doing homework, you are getting tired, you feel like you are not appreciated. Hey, somebody else has gone on their knees. So let my children do well like that person's children, because that person's children are doing well in school. All of a sudden, those talents that you are using and you are moaning about that you want to dig a hole and put it into, somebody else is praying to God and asking, Lord, make me like this person. Give me these blessings like this person. Gosh, I don't know if you've thought about it this way, but as the Holy Spirit was teaching me, I was like, oh my goodness. And sometimes when he teaches me some things, he shows me people's hearts. So that person, they envy you. I say, hey, and I'll see it in dreams. And so I was like, whoa, what's that? So that's envy. That person wishes they had this. Oh, wow. And where is it coming from? The talents that God has given you. Five, two, ten. I don't know what it is. It's a lot. And what are you doing? Digging, 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 digging big holes to put them in. God has invested something in you. God has invested something in you. And because he's invested in you, it needs to be grown and developed. Just like my Bible study leader told me, na na ya, for whom much has been given, much is re required. So I will go to our host and say, oh, pal, for which much has been given, much is required. Sister Augusta, for which much has been given, much is required. There's a lot required of us, so much. Now let's go to the one who dug the ground. Hmm. So verse 24, the one who dug the ground. He also, who, um, hmm. he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Master, listen to what he said. He said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Hey, I knew you to be a hard man. That's what we describe some of our bosses. So we are hard. Timothy, you don't appreciate nothing. You might describe your husband like that, your children like that. Me, I don't know. But I'm just saying, the master would expect something to be done. Hard man. I'll go to the amplified version. And he puts it this way. The one who has received one talent also came forward, say, Master, I knew to you to be harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have your own. Wow. You have your own. For you to say someone reaps a harvest where they did not sow. Hmm. They reap a harvest where they did not sow. For me, it tells me, it's clear not every talent is initially planned, planted in everyone. Listen, if the master is reaping talents where he didn't sow, that means somebody gains a talent that the master did not give in the first place. Just think about it. And the master gathering where he did not scatter seed. That means some of the seed is scattered. Not by the master. So that initial planting that happens of the seed that is given, listen carefully. When it is given and it is planted in you, 
it must grow and probably produce fruit, which then falls with seed and then it grows again into other seeds in other people. So God, who is the master, sows in us. And what happens then? We do some sowing, we sow the rest. Because it's obvious from what the man said that he said he, he comes to reap the harvest of the rest that have been done. You're using that talent, the thing that you're moaning about and you're doing this and you're doing that and nobody's appreciating you, blah, blah, blah. You're using that talent that you, you get no help with only brings others to God. Remember, I said somebody will be on their knees praying that let my family be like this and then working at it probably to get that. It brings others to God. They crave it. They learn from it. And then they too become like one who has the talent sown in them in the first place. Wow. So the servants recognize that the Lord of the harvest, which is God Almighty, would expect the land to be tilled. He expects the land to be tilled. He expects the land to be like, so God does some work. We also do some work. It's not like God plants it and he's, that's it. He's done some, now you do some. So my question is, what does it look like in your life? The plenty ironing that you do. The too much work that you do at home. The too much work that you do at work. The plenty responsibility that you have at work and nobody re recognizes you for. What does it now look like? Just think about it. What does it now look like? Like this servant, do you recognize that the father will come and make demands of that one talent? I Are we like, are we going to say, my boss was such a taskmaster, so I put the talent in the ground. Are you going to say, my husband was so, I don't know, do, 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 do. you put it there because you know all the names that you call. So I dug it and put it in the ground. My children were so, da, blah, 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 blah. So I dug it and I put it in the ground. What is the excuse you have? I am sure like me, you have plenty or you used to have plenty. I am sure you might have moved forward from the plenty excuses now. You moved forward and now you are questioning, how do I use them? You know, this is not a session where, you know how sometimes you go and listen to a sermon and they are telling you things like, so now I'll give you strategies or five ways to become a better, a better, um, um, I don't know what all these descriptions that people have. All I have is that this is only one way to live. There's only one way to live. Use your talents. Don't dig the ground and put it in it. How that will look in your life, in the other person's life, in the other person's life, I can't begin to look at all the different scenarios because there are many and plenty. Closer work women, closer work wives, closer work. We there are what thousand nine hundred of us currently. There are so many different scenarios at play. So the only way is use your talents. Don't dig a ground and put in it because you are looking at it from the stand viewpoint of your own selfish feeling or what other people just look at it from the stand view point of this is what God has put in me this is what God has put in me so use it at every to 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 to, to the max it's interesting you know when you go back to the passage the five talents person and the two talents person who used this it's interesting the accolade they got so the master said, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. 
You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Well done. Two words to consider here are good and faithful. Good means to be desired. You know, when you are good, like, oh, that person is a good person or that's a good thing. Something that you desire, something that you approve of. You're not mourning and demanding that others match up to your talents meets God's approval. It meets God's approval. You're using the talents that he's giving you and recognizing that much has been given to you. For whom much has been given, much is required. Seeing that just proves to you that, okay, I need to use it and it meets God's approval. God approves of you. God approves of you. So he will use the word good. Then the second word that God uses is faithful. Well, that word is a word that God uses to describe himself. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. But the Lord is faithful. He describes himself as faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the ever, um, the evil one the lord is faithful wow and god is describing the servants here as good and faithful faithful is highly rated for god god absolutely describes himself as faithful you get an accolade that is like god lamentations 3 lamentations 3 verse 22 to 23 says the steadfast love of the Lord, it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And God is faithful. He is so faithful to the degree where it is renewed every morning. So that good and faithful servant, that boss is wicked, though. that boss is this so, that husband is this so, that child is this so. It doesn't stay like that the whole day and then the following day comes and it continues. It gets renewed. You are faithful. So real crazy, you've forgotten, you are moving on. Exodus 34, verse 6 to 7. And he passes in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love. Hey, look at some of the descriptions of God over here. He's slow to anger. He's compassionate. He's gracious. He's abounding in love and faithfulness maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness and rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and so on. But he's faithful. He's loving. He's abounding in love. He's gracious. God is faithful. And he will describe you as faithful. You know, one of my favorite verses, I think every time I pray, I mention it's 1 John 1, 9. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins. Please, oh, be faithful. Get that accolade. Get it. God is faithful and he gives you that faithful title. He gives it to those two servants. He doesn't call them slothful like he did this, the, the one with the one talent. He doesn't. Because they are showing a God-given quality. So he's pleased with that God-given quality that, that these people are showing. 
He doesn't get upset. He, in fact, he rewards them. Get some more. So you see, when um, to 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 the one more is given, much is given, much is required. Guess what? The much is more, much more is given to you. The one who had ten had an extra one. Hey, so you think that you you are not being appreciated? Blah blah blah. And then there's more coming. Nowadays, sometimes I sit down. I go. I thought my job was plenty. Now sometimes I'm waking up praying with people. I didn't used to do that before. Now I'm busy sitting somewhere doing this, this, this. Sometimes as the Holy Spirit leads, you wake me up at 3 a.m. He's changed my routine, wake up, draw some, do some drawings, do this, do that, do that. Like, did I think I was busy? I'm super busy. Then all of a sudden, as if part of the training is not even finished. Now school has got so busy. I've never known it like this before. Like, like busy. This week, one of the days, I spent nearly 13 hours at work. When I got home, I thought, how, I, like, how is this possible? How is this even possible? 13 hours. I got there at 6.30. I left there at 7. Nearly 13 hours. Like, but that is it. They're like more, 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 because God is giving you more. He's expecting more deliverables. He's not a hard taskmaster. He appreciates you a lot. Don't look for your appreciation from other people. Don't look for it from human beings. Don't look for it. God is faithful. And he trusts you. Second Timothy 2, 11 to 13 says, he has a trustworthy saying, if he died with him, if we died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, oh, wait a minute. If we disown him, he will disown us. That's what happened to that, that third servant, yeah? Taking from him, that's the disowning. But here, it's verse, here verse, it says, it if says, he's faithless, he remains faithful. That quality of God never changes. That faithfulness, I know. It doesn't change. For he cannot disown himself. That's how the verse ends. He cannot disown himself. Himself is faithfulness. He cannot not be himself. We don't need any human endorsement. I know it's hard to even think about. It's hard to fathom. All you can think probably right now is your flesh. And the flesh is speaking me, I, I, I need help. I'm not appreciated. That's the flesh. Now move from that flesh area and go to the... Go to the God area. And in that God area, you get an endorsement, a God endorsement, good and faithful servant. I've decided for years now to be counted as faithful. So I stick to things. And sometimes when you stick to things and you're doing the right thing, sometimes maybe other people will, will go on their knees and pray to be, please give me that thing that person has. Other people too will resent you. The world will resent you badly. And the resentment of the world and the world is controlled by, by you know who Lucifer will manifest in so many different ways. But don't focus on that. Focus on God. Because he's giving you some talents that others don't have. Use them. Use them to draw others to God. Thank you, sisters. That is all I have to share. I have few words. And this is... Sister Pell. Yes, Sister Nanaya. 
Over God richly bless you so much. Wow. Sisters, I'm so blessed by, by this teaching. And in fact, from the angle um, she came from, I never expected her to go there anyway. And I am not saying this to praise her. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, relating this topic to um, the story about the talents. It's an eye opener for me. And I believe strongly that you are encouraged. And so she said so much. I'll try to summarize what she said and then open the discussion up for more contributions from all of us. I know this is um, an issue that we all may have gone through or are still experiencing. You know, it's a daily thing, habitual thing we, we feel, but the Spirit of God is teaching you and I. What are you taking home? What are you allowing the Spirit of God to change in you this evening? And so before we continue, I would also like to encourage you to send your questions to me if you have any. Nanaya, I don't know whether you'll still be with us because you said you'll be speaking for just 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, if you find Sister Nanaya with us, you could also send your questions to her. But if at the time of your typing, you can't find her, you can send it to me. Or Sister Belinda, if you don't mind helping me, you can send to any of the hosts available and we will read it and the Spirit of God will help us. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me summarize what she said. All that she said was that we are talking about a topic when we feel um, unappreciated or unnoticed, you know, and like you have heard, we are not limiting it to our home, but extending it to everywhere, you know, everywhere that we, 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 we stand to minister. So what she said in a nutshell is that whatever we do that we are complaining or we complain about and expect others to help us, it's actually um, Father putting us into that place or in that situation and expecting us to use the gifts, the talent he has given us to serve other people. But I believe strongly that because we are unaware, we tend to complain. So for example, if I'm the one doing all the chores in the home, cooking, I shouldn't complain. I should understand that that gift or that talent of cooking very well that everybody enjoys, I have to use it to serve the people. And wherever the Lord may lead me, if it's in the office, whatever I do best, I should see it as a talent and use it to serve everybody first. Everybody and please the Lord. So the work starts with us, you know, to be able to identify that whatever we are able to do and do well, it's a gift that is from God to us. When we have this understanding, then we will be able to put them to work appropriately. And when we are using it for work, like she's saying, we are not supposed to look back as to who is coming to help me or not, because Father knows that we can handle it. He has put enough um, strength, energy, whatever we need to do that job, he has put everything in us for us to be able to do it. Look at what Paul said in Acts 20, 30, 35. Let's look at it. If you have your Bible, kindly follow through so that if, <laughs> if by mistake I misquote, you can correct me. Thank you. Paul said, in everything I have pointed out to you by example that by working diligently in this manner, we ought to assist the weak, being mindful of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said, it is more blessed, makes one happier and more to be envied, to give than to receive. So here, Paul is quoting from the Lord. That from his own words, he says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We know the scripture very well. And most often we relate it to money, giving money or whatever. But we can relate this to what we are learning. 
what are we doing? What are we giving? We are offering services. We are serving as wives, as Christian sisters, as colleagues or employees in organizations, as parents. We are giving energy, time, life. We give. We are being encouraged by the words of uh, spoken to by the Holy Spirit through our sister that it is blessed to give. It is a blessing to use the talent we have than to receive. So this issue of expecting, okay, I'm cooking, I'm expecting somebody to come and help me, expecting somebody to come and help me do this, I'm expecting. We'll have to allow the Spirit of God to help us to do it with the Holy Spirit. She said we should continue to do the good thing we know to do. Use our talent to serve everyone that the Lord brings our way. There's a scripture that I want to read to that. Let's look at James 4, 17. It says that, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So if it's in the office, like she's saying, expecting her colleagues to help and they are not helping. So because of that, and she said it, but and she related it to the one who buried the talent. Because of this, I'm the only one doing this all the time and I'm tired, so I won't do it again. We are being told here that when we get there, we are sinning. And so let's use the gifts. If you are a cook, a good cook, continue to cook, cook well. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I'm laughing because I never planned to share this. To God's glory, I say this with humility. I cook good kinky. I'm a gun. I do it very well. And there's a demand in the house for me to do kinky. We all know that kinky is not an easy food to cook like rice. You put it on and then you go away. The, 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 the tedious process is when you put it on fire. You have to keep your eyes on it and be giving, watering it until it is ready. And it can go, the minimum number of hours is four hours for kinky. And then a demand is placed on me to do kinky. Hey. <laughs> it is not like kinky once a while. You are cooking kinky every week. Because people in the home love to eat your kinky. Today I have learned that this is a gift God has given me to serve the people around you. And so I just want to add, yes, we are, we are, we are, we are um, humans first. We are spirit first, but we are living in bodies that can be exhausted. What do we do? When we get tired, let's turn to the one who gave us the gifts. When we are way down, let's tend to the master. Let's tend to the Holy Ghost to help us. I was put on a shadow when I was working in the bank to do a task I never enjoyed. And I was always like Nanaya will say, the matter thing. According to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings, according to the ways, according to the fruit of the doings, fruit of the doing. So what we do, no, it will bear fruit. But let's pause and ask ourselves, the fruit that will be born out of our actions, will it be sour fruit or it will be sweet? He's coming to reward you and I. Then again, he says in Revelations 22, I read from 12 to 13, says that yes, I'm reading from the message version. He said, yes, I'm on my way. That's Christ talking. I'll be there soon. I'm bringing my payroll with me. I'll pay all people in full for their life's work. I'm A to Z, the first and the final, beginning and conclusion. I love this translation, more especially... Uh, um, when he uses the word like pay rule, you know, it brings so, so, so many memories to, to me. And I know it's, it touches your heart too. He's coming with pay rule. We know how pay rule looks like. 
we know how it looks like. Your name is there. The work you did, the targets you were given, whether you met it, and the reward that comes with it. He's bringing the payroll with it, with this understanding. I believe our answers or our issues are being addressed. He said we should put no hope in man. The same Jeremiah. When you read, I'm trying to get a particular place. You can help me with it by posting it in the window for all of us if you get it. He says, curse is the one who puts his trust in man. The one who puts his trust in man. So why is my husband not helping? Why are my children not helping? Why is this not happening? Why is this person not helping? He says, that person is cursed. And then he says that the one who puts his trust in God is blessed. Sisters, by the mercies of God and in the power of the Holy Ghost, I entreat all of us, let us not leave this session with the same mindset. Let's go to our homes, in our workplaces, to the markets, in the family, wherever, and do what we know best to do. For there is a great reward. There is a great reward for all of us. Let's put our mind on the fact that maybe the reward may not come in this life, but where we will be living forever, the reward will be given to us. When we are tired and we think we can't go on, let's ask for strength from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would help us. When I started this uh, program, my lights were off. And I've told my sisters in the how-to team that I may go off at any time. And I've been looking for someone to hold a fort, you know, and praying alongside. As Nanaya was speaking, all I was doing here, I was just praying because my phone will go off at any time. And I told the Holy Spirit, this is your work. I won't carry stress. I, if you give me power, I will do it. The battery has run down to 30, 30, 30 cra <laughs> before I realized, boom, the power came back. So as I speak to you, my phone is on charge. I'm sharing this to encourage you. He knows our hearts. He knows. Let's depend on him. Let's go and do the good thing we know. Let's use the talents. Let's depend on the spirit to help us. For there is a reward that is waiting for all of us. If we refuse to do, Matthew 25, 29 says, to those who will use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. So if you continue to use the talent, more will be given to you. Whatever you are good at in the office, that's because you are not getting help, you don't want to do. If you use it and use it well, he is looking at the heart, the motive, everything. He will give more. But this is where I got scared. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. This is a warning. Are you a good mom, a good teacher, a good nurse, a good wife, a good employee? Continue to do that and more will be added. But he says that those who do nothing, even what, that little thing, it will be taken away from you. God doesn't like waste. So he is not going to put talent into us for us to complain about and refuse to use it. You have heard a second sermon. <laughs> Forgive me. My summary has turned into a sermon, but I've been speaking by the power of the Spirit, so I know you are not bored. At this moment, sisters, I open the floor for us to share more contributions. Okay, Sister Nanaya, thank you for posting the, the scripture. If you could add the, the verses to it. Curse is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh. 
and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Drawing strength from our husbands, drawing strength from our colleagues, drawing strength from people. Come and help me. There is nothing wrong in seeking help. But when you seek and the help is not coming. But before you even seek from people, we are learning from the, this word. Go to the Holy Ghost first. Because the human being we are expecting to come and help. The Bible says they draw strength from where? They are mere, mere flesh. Other version says they have but a breath in them. It's a journey that we are all walking on. And I believe we are all growing. The Spirit of God is growing us. Let's practice what we hear and what we learn. And we will enjoy our journey. Joyce Myers says something all the time I love to quote. Love God and enjoy him forever. It's a journey, you. It's a journey. It's a choice we have to make. This journey, we don't know when the master is coming. We don't know how many more months, how many more years. Do you want to continue to complain, lament till the end? We don't know when the master is coming. So let's enjoy the journey all the way in the power of the Holy Ghost. Questions, not yet, but contributions, more sharing are welcome. Thank you very much, Sister Nanaya. So sisters, let's look at the, the word that has been posted in the chat window and allow the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts about drawing strength from people. The Holy Spirit is our strength now. I am taking a short break, waiting for you to share. You could lift your hand and I'll call you. If you have questions, like I said, kindly post them into my chat window. At the right time, we will read them. Contributions, what do you do? What is the godly woman expected to do when her actions seem on notice? Your work on notice. I know we can get discouraged, but we are learning today not to walk by our flesh. If discouragement is coming, tell the Holy Ghost. He knows how to handle you. Just make up your mind. I will do it. I will do it. Strength will come from above. Questions, contributions, more sharing. The floor is open. Sisters, the floor is open. Auntie Jo, you want to chip in something? I see Sister Irene too. And Sister Maud, all of us are here. I can't mention all the names. <laughs> the floor is open. We'll have time for questioning. Questions and answers. Good evening. Oh, Sister Nancy, you are here. Oh, okay. Thank yes. you very much. Can you go ahead? Thank mm -hmm. you. Please, mine is not a question, but a word of encouragement to all other sisters who are going through uh, unappreciative um, behaviors, mostly more from the house, from the home, most especially about husbands, some some of our husbands. I, for one, um, have been helped by the Holy Spirit for a long time now in my marriage. I got married in 2014. So it's almost 10 years. So by March will be 10 years. But when we got to 2018, my husband lost his job. He wasn't losing the job, but he left the job. He wasn't doing anything. He started his PhD and he stopped the work and the PhD. So uh, I have to stand in for him. Meanwhile, um, I'm just a teacher. His job, his salary was much higher than mine. But because of the Holy Spirit, because of the belief in God, Moving according to whatever we've been taught at church, the reading, studying of the Bible, I was able to stand in and then 
that at the end of the day, I will say uh, we've gone through a lot, but God was on our side. Even though till now he has not been working, he has been bedridden for almost a year now. He had stroke last year on the 5th of December and uh, I've been catering for him. Families don't come. His families don't come. It's more or less like they don't really care about it. But I've been there for him. And sometimes, if not for God, if not for the Holy Spirit, I may have sent him back to his family members because of the way he sometimes talked to me, the way sometimes his siblings say certain things and people hear and tell me, if not for God, for the fear of God, and some of the teachings that I listen to, by now, uh, we wouldn't have even still been married. married. Have have divorced. 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 So, so I just want to encourage uh, my sisters that it will not be easy for you when your husband do not appreciate you. Because uh, before his sickness, before him losing his job, he doesn't really care about me or the home. Sometimes he could just tell you he was working, but he could just tell you that. He doesn't have money. Because you're also working, you can also look after the home. So if I want to think about the way he treated me earlier, before he lost his job, and then sickness set in, by now it wouldn't have been good. But to the glory of God, I had a building after he lost his job. I had to build by force because I realized I had, I had a dream that I need to move out of where I am, move ahead of myself. I realized my salary, where is he going to? Where is he taking me to? How can I build with my salary? And I realized I need to take a loan. And I had my loan and I used it to buy the land, half plot of a land. I had a building, even though it is uncompleted, it's been roofed. We are in it, as, as I speak now. I was supposed to finish the building last year, but because he fell sick, I have to take the loan and spend everything on his treatment. But I wasn't discouraged. With all he has been saying, he, he doesn't talk from the beginning, he doesn't have a speech. But now the, he has been gaining the speech. He has gained the speech almost. The voice is out now, but it's just that it's not all that clear. But we can hear him. So with how he doesn't appreciate it, I sometimes tell him because I'm a human being. I sometimes tell him I'm, I'm, I'll be angry and tell him that he's unappreciative. He doesn't appreciate whatever I do for him, and that is the annoying part because upon seeing me doing all the things I do for you, he used pampers for about three months, getting to the fourth month before we stopped using pampers. All those things were loans I took because I wasn't having money. Uh -huh. My loan will be, will, will be finished by 2024, ending of 2024. So you could imagine how... I'm going through all the stress and things. We had three kids and I have to look after almost everybody at home. My husband, my kids, I have to buy things for them. So I just want to encourage us. Uh, it is, uh, um, Aunt Nanaya said something earlier that uh, who much is given, much is expected. Uh, some people tell me that if I wouldn't be able to carry the cross. God wouldn't give me. And I've realized it that it's because I can carry it. It's because I can contain all the insults he has been giving me, all the bad muffin from his family members and all other people. Upon all those things, I'm the only person who could carry that burden. That's why God gave me. And he's helping me go through almost every stage of it. And I realized that when these things come, most especially when they are not appreciating us, it's a face. God just wants you, want to see if you could pass through that face. If you have passed through, you, you successfully passed through it, then you open up another door for you. And I've, I've realized it. it's, it's happening real in my house. All the time, people give me things, food, 
even clothing myself. People give me dresses. I don't buy dresses again because I don't have money to buy. And I don't feel shy when I wear old things. Things that I have from 2016, I have them. I still wear them. People talk about it most of the time, but I, I really don't care. If my husband could be alive, my kids are doing well, then I'm okay. What is dress about? What is painting my nails or using the facial things about? So I think that it is just a face. If they don't appreciate you, God just wants to see if you can go through that face and his reward, if you can receive that reward. Because I got to know of this book not so long ago, but I realized that it's, it's a blessing that came my way. And it was a, there was a time I had to think about it again as to whether to live or to cut short my life. And somebody from this group called me. That same day I was thinking about this, harming myself. A lady called that we met at a program. She called that she wanted to pray, help me pray. Because I said it on my status that I am weak. I can't pray any longer. And in fact, when our husbands do not appreciate us, we feel that even prayers, how we pray for them, will stop. Most especially me. I sometimes think that then it is not it is that it is better I don't pray for him again. Because I pray for you, you tell me trash. I do things for you, you tell me trash. So what should I do? And sometimes I hold back myself and tell myself that I it would I wouldn't always say that I've, I've been destined because nobody's been destined for bad things. We are children of God, so our destiny will always be on the right path. So Always, I always encourage myself that it is a face. When I pass through that face, it means that my destiny has been strengthened. So that's all, always what I used to encourage myself with. So that's all I have to say for now. We, we should know that even if our husbands don't have jobs, we are there to back them. That's why we are together. That's why we are married. You have to back your husband. Without your husband, you can do, you can be whatever you want to be. Even if he's still alive and he doesn't do anything, or if he's there, he doesn't appreciate you for doing whatever you are doing. My husband doesn't help me take care of the kids. I do all those things myself. Even the day that thing will happen to him, he didn't help me the whole of the morning. So seven, we left home. He didn't help me. Meanwhile, he wasn't doing any job. He's always at home, but he doesn't help. So if I, if I were to have not listened to my conscience, maybe my husband would have died at home before we, get, we go home, like I'm, I'm around three o'clock. But because my conscience was talking to me, Nancy, there is something happening to your husband. His picture was showing. I was doing some job, script checking. I went to school and left for the job. So I went out. I was just seeing my husband. I said, ah. My husband didn't help me today. How come his face is coming? Well, how come I'm looking at his picture on my script? So I have to move out and go and call somebody to check on him. The person wasn't going on time. And things were appearing to me. Nancy, what if you become a widow? And I said, never. I can't be a widow. And from that, I have to stand up. I left. I packed all the script and gave it to the officials that I'm leaving that my husband is not feeling warm. And he was asking, how? I said, I'm feeling that he's not feeling warm. And truly, I go home and my husband, one part of him is gone. Very cold. And one part is very dark. We went to hospital. The doctor said, we didn't see anything. We should go for a brain scan. We went for the brain scan. The brain was intact. Nothing was happening to him. That's what they told me, that I should send him home. Meanwhile, the person can't talk. The person had the eyes open, but he can't see anything. He would just be holding, he would hold me very tight and tell me to pray for him. Meanwhile, when I'm praying sometimes, he, tell, he tells me that I am wasting my time. Now that he's in trouble, he has realized that my prayers have been working. So he asked me to pray for him. So I think that we shouldn't neglect them. As we go, as we move ahead, a lot of things will come our way. We just have to stay, uh, stay strengthened. 
we don't have to say because they are weak and we are praying for them and they are misbehaving. We should just leave them behind. If I were to have left my husband behind, maybe by now he wouldn't have been alive. Because when he started talking, he told me never to send him to his family members. His families have been fighting that they want my husband. They want to take him home. He said if he should go, he would die. I don't know what he has seen. So as we speak now, the sister is still fighting me that I am keeping the brother. Meanwhile, you are telling me that you can't handle him the way things that they, they said he shouldn't eat cassava, he shouldn't do this. How, how is she going to get money to be buying the special food for him? That was what they are telling me. But still, you want the person to come to you. And that is what I don't want to do. And God is not allowing me to allow him to go to. Sometimes when my father is angry and he tells me, like, he, he threatened my husband that if he doesn't take care, he will come and take him to his family members. Then I will start crying. Why am I crying? Me, who is suffering? Why am I crying? It should rather be a, a source of joy to me that they are taking my bed in a way. But I am almost always crying whenever my father, or oh, sometimes I tell my father, I shouldn't be saying those things. And my father will tell me, he's just saying it for him to change from the way he's behaving because he shouldn't be behaving that way towards me. But I realize it's God. If not because it's God, I wouldn't have been getting angry or feeling fearful whenever they want to take him away. Uh -huh. So I realize it's God. And now as we speak now, my husband prays. It's just that I don't see him praying uh, with tongue, but sometimes I wouldn't say meditation because when he hears uh, pastors praying on TV on, or on radio, he closes the eye. It means that he's listening to the prayers. Even though he, he's not opening his mouth to pray, he's listening. So I just want to encourage us. Let's, let's try our best and hold them down. No matter what they tell us, no matter what they say to us, no matter how angry we are, let's have the hearts because we are the women. We know how to handle issues more than them. So uh, that's all I have for us. I have a lot of testimonies on handling my home alone without my husband. Imagine, I am now 32. My age, people always tell me that my age does not merit the things I do. Because at that age, I'm supposed to be, people call it 10 minutes enjoying life. But I am always using the, my money to invest in things. Today, I'm selling Tomorrow I'm doing this and all the jobs that come, easy job, whatever job, I am always not sitting down. Even it got to a time I had to wash people's dresses in town. I mean, so I have to wash people's dresses and be paid for it. Yeah, because now I have kids, more, three of them, and one is only three. She was three yesterday. I, I don't have time to go around and take people's things and wash again. And because sometimes, because of his sickness, mostly a lot of things that I do to help the home, I no longer do it because you can't leave him alone at home. You have to go to school, come back and check on him, go back again. Uh -huh. Those are the things that make me lose some of the, the petty, petty jobs I do to get money. But I still hold, hold God. I hold him tight that he should do whatever he can to save me from the shame that maybe the devil had. He wants me to uh, be ashamed, but I know God is always on my side. So I'm encouraging anybody who is going through that kind of uh, uh, unappreciative situation to stay focus and see what God will do for you because he's doing it for me so he can as well do it for you thank you thank you to DSS what a rich testimony to the glory of God sisters we are exalting the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and we are testifying to the work of the Holy Spirit he has put in you and I when we allow the Spirit of God to do his work, 
glory will always go to Jesus Christ because Jesus said that when the spirit of truth comes, he will not speak on his own. Jesus says that he will bring glory to me. So let's allow the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to do his work. His work in you and I is to bring glory to Jesus, not to himself. He didn't come to point us to himself. He came to point us to Jesus. Let's try not to hinder his work in us. Yes, I understand. Some of the situations can be very tough. We can get discouraged. We may feel like throwing in the towel. Our bodies can get grow tired and weak. But the Bible says, Romans 8, 11, if the spirit of the one who raised Christ from the dead lives in you, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body. If only we will depend on the Holy Spirit. Like Paul said, we can do all things. The testimony our sister shared is very touching. Demonstrating the love of Christ in a situation like this and receiving insults in exchange. It can take only the power of God and the grace of God for anyone to remain in a situation like this. And yes, the Lord is able to cause you and I to stand. Let's look at what he says in Colossians 3, 15. Say that. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as part of his one body and always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. Apply the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the Psalms and with festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can give us songs, and he does to all of us. We testify to that all the time. So sing to God with all your hearts. Amplified classics, the same verse, it says that, and let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ's rule, act as umpire continually in your hearts. Deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which, as members of Christ's one body, you were called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Sisters, we are being challenged to be thankful and to be appreciative, giving praise to God always. And then he concludes in um, verse 17 and says, And whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon his person, giving praise to God the Father through him. So sisters, the scripture I've read from Colossians 3, 15 to 17 is talking about being like Christ, thinking like him, allowing his peace to rule, allowing his peace to guard our decision-making, doing everything as unto him. This verse 17 is what we are learning, where we feel we are not being appreciated or what we are doing, nobody is seeing. Remember the eyes of the Lord is to and for the air, and we are being encouraged. Do everything, whether in words or in deeds, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, and depend on his person. We are being encouraged. So the answer to our question, what do you do? Depend on the Lord. Sister, depend on the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Forevermore. Okay, Sister Nanaya, sorry, I just saw your hand. Kindly unmute and share with us, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, um, Sister Pell. And thank you to the sister who shared earlier on what a testimony. So um, I got um, a simple question. I was trying to type, but I think I'm too slow in typing. So the question was, how can you apply the, the role of um, the talents to 
a husband and wife um, scenario. So my simple answer to that is, um, without going into um, um, marriage school territory where there's so much recording on marriage school and so on, and I would advise that uh, maybe some um, people can go to YouTube and find stuff. I'll just say, just just simply say that um, as a wife, because we, we, we tend to just focus on what God has made us as wives and we pray that our husbands will also get the, the help they need in other ways from the father. Um, as wives, if our role is some given talent that God has given you, you can't withdraw that, that talent away from your husband and away from your family. Because if you did that, it would be the same as digging a hole to put it in. So if, um, for example, your husband cannot cook, but you are the one who can cook. And because of some issues, you have decided, I won't cook anymore for this family. Well, by withdrawing that, that, that thing, it's as good as putting, it, putting that talent in the ground. And your father would demand of you why you did that. So I guess this talent thing applies to every situation, be it at work and also be it, be it at home in our marriages. And we can support our, our spouses at home by doing the right thing by them and always remembering God has put you there to be the helper and you cannot leave your post. So I, I remember listening to Sister Fe or, or, or Pastor Adlai, I'm, I'm, I'm quite not sure. But um, there was this picture that was painted of a guard standing by a doorpost and decides that me crown keep watching anymore. I'm gonna leave it. Well, the thieves will come. The thief will come. So you can't leave your post. So whatever it is that you've been equipped with to help this marriage be stronger and to help the family, don't withdraw it. It will be. It will be. It will be foolish to. But what is wise is to keep going, focus on God, focus on God, and he will turn things around. Thank you. I hope that helped that person and also anybody else who's thinking like that. Thank you. Over to thank you, Sister you. Yes, thank you very much, Sister Nana. Yeah, God bless you for sharing that. Sisters, I'm very encouraged, and I know you are too. I know you are too. Let's not lose heart. The Bible encourages us not to lose heart in doing good, especially to the household of saints. It says that in due course, in due course, we will reap the reward if we don't give up. In due course, we'll reap the reward. Okay, so the floor is open for more questions. Questions at this time. Comments. We are glorifying Jesus. Sisters, don't go away with a burden on your heart. Why don't you lay it down? So the Spirit of God can minister to you. What has the Lord taught you on this journey? The pill oh, is interesting, no. isn't it? The, the usual talkers are not here, but I'm sure we've got sisters here. Yes. Oh, so so at this time, Nana, I, I, I just want us to pause and then um mm -hmm. Receive mm -hmm. questions. We we spoken yeah. a lot, and probably somebody may be asking with something in their mind. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't going to um speak. Actually, I was going to encourage people to speak because you've yes, done some please. fantastic job, and um I think people are used to other people coming to talk all the time. But sisters, you've got it in you. Today is the day that you get a chance to rise up and support Sister Pell and to give us some nuggets of wisdom. Your experiences. 
And I'm I'm excited. I'm waiting to hear. I promise Mr. Pell that I'll be here a short while, but I've stayed the whole time because I'm absolutely intrigued um and, and been blessed by everything she's shared as well. So if you've got something, some nuggets of wisdom to share or some experience and how you dealt with it, it will be yeah. really good. I think you've got Sister Vivian. Sister Vivian. Yes. Mm. Please go ahead, sis. Sis Viv, kindly go ahead. Um, kindly unmute and share. Sorry, I was struggling to find the um mute button. Um, so thank you. Uh, so just a quick question. Um, at times women, I think um two weeks ago there was a topic about um I think if your husband um gives like an unwise with um unwise kind of counsel, and then um I think it went into discussing about um you know being submissive and um you know as a woman and stuff like that. And um, I think sometimes we're put in a position where we have to be strong women. Um, I think every woman would want to stop to life just to get on with it. And um, but you get put in the position where maybe you have to, you know, take charge of the home because if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. And you know, the house needs to run. Kids need to, you know, get on to school. You know, you need to apply for the schools. Every like every everything that we have to do as women um and you know now the term described used to describe it is a mental load right so it's a heavy load that we have to think of like thinking of booking the school buses or the after school clubs or breakfast clubs or everything what they're going to eat planning everything so you take you get on with it right and you take control but then um on the flip side you're called um you know, a controlling person, a controlling woman. Um, how do you create a fine balance between just getting on with things? Because one, you have helpless kids who are looking up to you in a, a household where even if you have a husband, so like you where you're not complaining, where you're not, you know, murmuring, but you're just getting on with it because it needs to be done. And then the table is turning, you're called controlling, you know? Um, how how does a person deal with that? And I know we're talking about the Holy Spirit and things like that, but in the, and as much as we have the Holy Spirit, God knows we're humans, right? And He knows that certain things are beyond our reach, right? And like, of course, He gives us the Spirit to guide us, but as humanly possible, how do you deal with that? Because we all have personalities that will come at play. That if you're told some someone will be told they're controlling and they'll stop altogether you know because it's like I don't want to come and step on anyone's toes you know I don't want to be the wife because how can a, a submissive wife be a controlling wife do you get my point so then they'll stop and then do the submissive part of it like where they're like okay I'm gonna just do yes or no but then the house is gonna go to ruin um or someone will just still carry on and get on with it so as a human as human and as with different personalities how do we create the fine balance between, you know, just doing things, getting on with it, and um, kind of accepting certain, like, backlash based on just doing that, like, where you feel like you've even followed the word of God, right? You're just, you're not complaining. You've got the talent, so you're doing it. You're, you're just, you know, um, that's, I think that's my question. I don't know if anyone can support it there. Hello, okay. so if it makes any sense, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Can I, I can go ahead. Yes, it does, sis. It makes a lot of sense because um, here's you trying your best. You know, I've been working through Bible study and one of the things we've been working on is assurance of guidance and knowing that God is going to guide you whichever way, shape or form. So, so long as what you're doing is being guided by God, then whatever backlash you're getting, um, I won't focus so much on it. One of the things I've also learned is, uh, is what love is. And what is really clear is love is absolutely the repeated action that will benefit the other person. So whatever you are doing, I, I, I'm not saying um, we are going to focus on what the other person is doing, because if we do that, then that's not love, because the love is you focusing on what you are doing for that person. 
and is repeatedly doing it. And, and therefore, if you know what you're doing is love towards that person, then you wouldn't stop it and then change your mind and do something else and then stop it and go and do something else. Because then, then you are one, not being guided by the spirits to do the right thing. And so you would be blown here and there and everywhere. And secondly, you won't be following the way of love because the way God, God, God loves us, there's no, I don't know how to explain, but um, John 3.16 will explain it quite nicely. For God so loved the world that he did this, or God's love is shown through this, so he does this. And he does it repeatedly and unconditionally and just keeps going. So um, when, um, without focusing on the other person, and but focusing on us, when somebody sees you as controlling, maybe for them probably um, the way they grew up, nobody really helped to do anything and things just went awry. I don't know where they are coming from, but you know what is right. So you will keep doing what is right. And then you will keep praying and hoping that God will let that person, if it's led by God, to see, see the rights that you are doing. So that's how I see it. And I don't know if I've helped you in any way, but um, um, if you're doing the right thing, persevere. Don't give up. Don't. Don't give up, sis. You're fantastic. It was nice hearing you. <laughs> Come back if you want to talk some more. I'm thank you. Um, thank you. Um, can I do a follow-up question? Yes. Um, and I think it was based on um, when um, you were talking earlier um, mm. I think when is it Nanaya um was talking earlier, um about I think it'll get to a point maybe she'll see her daughters and be like oh look at you just um you know sitting there and I mean she didn't like go into it like that but I think she would understand where where um the point at which um she got to and where she said that and um you know we're talking about not being appreciated so I have kids and I think one thing about me is I'm always very grateful to God right. Of course, I'm human. So I have moments where I complain, right? But then I I believe in gratitude and it goes a long way. And that's something I'm teaching my kids and my family. So if one of them has a birthday, um, I try to get the other one to get a birthday present or the other sibling, just so that they learn how to even give to each other, right? And learn how to appreciate each other for them being in their lives so with things like that I want to be able to teach them to be grateful um for the things that are being done for them you know and the privileges that they have because I always say to them not a lot of people have what you have you know you might not have like everything in the world but what you have not a lot of people have so you need to appreciate that and um how do you like yeah I get it not complain but how do you then it's like, okay, you have the talent, so you just get on with it. But then how do you raise kids in the way they need to grow that they don't depart from it mm -hmm. by impacting, like, you know, the spirit of gratitude in them mm -hmm. um, without then also, like, digging the hole and putting your talent in it? Like, mm -hmm. does that, yeah, I always say, does that make sense? But yes. you want to be able to be a holistic parent because at the end of the day, God I always say on this earth, God is going to ask me what I did with the ki the kids, you know? And um, when I leave, God, that's what he's going to ask me because he's put them in my hands. And of course, like he's given me the wisdom and everything, but mm -hmm. he's given us that responsibility to raise them right. Mm -hmm. So if I depart from him because I'm thinking of, okay, let me not be like the, let me be a good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a holistic view of all of that um so yeah how do you do that where you're not leaving your kids to just chill like you know or um you're you're you know you're you're worried to you're worried about like um not not doing the right thing with god um in terms of like serving but then you end up just kind of like forfeiting your responsibility to them um to you so, know get them to know things in the, like more or less in the house and everything yeah. So um um you you sound like you live in the UK so I I don't know but I think you probably do. Um yeah. 
Um, right. So um, I do too, and I've lived here all my life. My daughters are twenty two and nineteen, and um, you, you've got to meet them because they they are the most amazing young women. So oh, that's nice. <laughs> some of the examples I'm giving. It was my resentfulness when they were younger, even sitting down, mm. but because they've gone to school, I've taken them to ballet, they've mm. gone to they've gone to do music, they've gone to do blah blah blah. But there was always a reason why something. But um I stay at home now and I can I can literally not lift a finger and everything is being done for me because mm. they have learned from from the example of watching me do stuff and they know they've got to serve. So it hasn't been um, a shouting match at anybody. It hasn't, but the example of, of living that life was more powerful than anything else. So in the Bible, we say that um, um, Christ came to walk the walk that we didn't, we couldn't do. He came to live the life that we couldn't do and it was credited to us. Some of the things that you have to do, it won't be, it won't be um, something that you would say, talk about a lot or, whatever but your life alone will give somebody some example of of what what they would want to be or what they would aspire to be so i gave an example of um um you'll be doing things and somebody else will be sitting at the back probably envying you and probably um um sitting there going i wish my life was like that person but it is only because you are making that talent work that is drawing drawing attention to it. So um, um, I don't know how young your 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 babies are, but I'm just saying that um, that there is a balance, and mm. um, I won't I won't draw I won't draw people into do it this way, do it that way, do it mm. that way. I, I will take. I will take the honors from the Holy Spirit, who is the one who is supposed to lead us and give us wisdom. So whatever you need to do with your children, I will gently implore you. Because he's the one who guides us, he's our friend, he's our comfort. Go to God and let him give you the wisdom, especially with your children, how to manage them. But maybe next time when you, if you ever get to come to the UK retreats and my daughters come, you'll get to meet them and you'll be, you'll be amazed at what God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, it's really great. And I hope I've helped a little bit. Yeah, you have. Thank you. No, I, I always definitely see what God is doing in their lives. Like mine are very young, so like seven and five. Mm. But even when they're out there, you see what God is doing. And um, I think it's just, it's just nice and at times sometimes you feel like you're maybe yelling a bit too much <laughs> mm -hmm. but um and then you just explain things to them and like you know be like okay maybe this is it and sometimes they see me just crazy like screaming to god god please help my children to listen <laughs> and they're like mm -hmm. so um yeah no um over time they see like they see you going to god and like even on their behalf and um and things like that so yeah eventually it just rubs off on them but I'm very happy to hear about your daughters and looking forward to the UK retreat as well but thank you god bless yep. you over to you sister Pell. yeah thank you sisters thank you that was fantastic so like sister Nanaya said I just want to um top up with a scripture you know we believe children are a gift from god but surprisingly I mean, it gets to a point where in reason, then we become so frustrated and we forget about the gift giver. Like Nanaya said, he knows how. He knows each child, how he formed them and how he wired them. So if we partner with the Holy Spirit, he's not going to give us one formula to apply to every child because they are all different. He will teach you how to handle child A. He will teach you how to handle child B. He will give us the wisdom to handle them he will mold us we become like role models to them so as he is working on us our children are watching and they emulate our example but the whole work of teaching them to be who god wants them to be using their talent and all those things is done by the holy spirit and i use the scripture to support that isaiah 54 you could mark it and then Read it later. Isaiah 54 verse 13. And the Lord is speaking here. 
I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace. This is a word that has worked for me a lot. And it's still working when I become frustrated with some of the behaviors, especially from the boys. I just go to the Lord and I tell him, I don't want to stress. You said you will teach them. Then I tell the Holy Spirit, wherever I am playing your role, help me to relax and allow you to do the work in them. So the kind of things we see, the kind of things we want them to be, it is the Holy Spirit who would do that work in our children. And I just want to encourage all of us. We may not be seeing the work of the Holy Spirit in, the, in our children, but he works. Sister Nanaya has shared about her, her case. He works. If his word is saying that I will teach them, they will enjoy great peace. We have to allow the Lord to teach them. Create the environment for the Lord to teach them. Feed them with godly stuff. Let them look, read godly things. But we can't leave them on their own and allow them to assess things they are not supposed to assess and expect uh, any good behavior. So we have to partner with the Spirit of God in teaching them. And he will teach them through us. This is what I have to share. Sisters, I don't know whether you, you anyone wants to add, but this question is open to all. Sister Nanaya has spoken so well by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have done a pop-up. We can add, I believe most of us have kids. How do we handle this? Teaching them gratitude. Hey, where are the, the mummies? All of us are mummies. Okay. Sister Nunana, I've seen you. I've seen you. I'm going to. Sister Maud, you are also there. Sister Irene, you want to top up? Let's hear your voice, is Kakra. Sister Maud, you want to top up for us? Are you able to speak? Oh, Sister Nunana. Okay. Sister Ma, is Sister Ma with us? Sister Ma, IT. Okay. She's not with us. Okay. Maybe we, we, we want to close, so we are all quiet. One last question or contribution. Oh, oops. Did I? Oops. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I think there's a question in there. Is somebody talking? Sorry. Is somebody sharing? Oh, Sister Josephine. But fine. It's an action. Sister Josephine, do you want to share? Oh, okay, you've got muted. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, sisters, let me read a question I just saw in the chat. It says that if you had a bank account filled with love, kindness, is it a question? Oh, yeah, it is. If you have a bank account filled with love, kindness, goodness and all the wonderful things and others kept dipping into aim to make withdrawals without depositing likewise aren't we going to run bankrupt eventually where is the point where you post you put yourself first thank you very much sister Pelly, for asking this question i'll try to address it and then let sister nanaya add to it Looking at the question from where it's coming from, we are looking at the physical. We have a bank account. It's like logical. But sisters, we know, we know that what the Lord expects us to do might not be logical to the human mind. So this scenario, when if we have to follow this scenario, we can never follow any of the word that has been read. A lot of scriptures have been used by the Spirit of God this evening to teach us how to handle a situation like this. Now, you are talking about physical bank account and you making physical deposits into it. But we are looking at the situation where we are drawing from a spiritual bank account. The physical bank account, who is the banker or who is the institution? It's a human bank. Who is the customer? It's you. Looking at the heavenly bank, who owns the bank? It's Father God. Does he ever run out of cash? 
Does he ever run out of any resource? So, in addressing this, the, the, there's a question I'm asking. How do we stand? Are we standing as children of God? Are we standing as people of the word, spiritual people? Are we standing as Paul would say in Romans 8? Are we living by the flesh or we are living by the spirit? If we are able to address that issue, then we will know that this journey and what the Holy Spirit is teaching us is not a physical work anyone can do in our own strength. So if we focus on physical, my strength will run out, my this will run out. And I'll obviously, because we are living in the body, in this physical world, that will happen. Your strength will run out. But if you know your source, he will replenish. That's why he said that even the young ones grow exhausted and weary. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. When we read that scripture, what comes to mind? We will get tired. Even if it is not working to be appreciated, whatever we do on this planet, it, the human body can get tired. But the scripture is saying, that is why he's always encouraging us to come to him. And I quoted from the beginning, we live in him. We move in him. We have our being in him. So it is when we live outside him and we refuse to bring him into the picture and we want to do things in our own strength, then we get to the point where the strength is gone we are discouraged and we can't turn our faces to him. That is when we give in and we are tired and we are complaining. But the flesh can get tired. Jesus himself got tired and he slept in a boat. Tiredness will come. But what do we do? We look at the scriptures, look at the life of Christ. Every time he's preaching, he's teaching, he's healing. The Bible will say, look at, study the prayer life of Christ. Sometimes, during the day, he withdraws from the people and goes to a quiet place. He goes to draw strength from the Father back. And so I'm just encouraging us. When we feel we are tired of doing the good we are doing, go to him and draw strength from him. But first, he judges the mind and the heart. Do you want to do good? Do you want to continue what you are doing? Do you want to shine where he has put you? Do you want to use your talent like Sister Nanaya has shared with us? Or you want to bury it because you are not, nobody is helping? When we make the right choice, he releases strength. When we decide not to do it, we will collapse under the burden. But if the heart is willing and we connect to him, the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead, he gives life to our mortal bodies. That life he gives to the mortal body is for us to do good. So sister, be encouraged. The bank account in God, the strength, the life, the air we breathe, the good health, we don't earn it on our own. We don't create it. Somebody deposits it into us. And that is the saving in our life. So just like you are going to the bank to deposit, Father also deposits strength. He deposits talents. He deposits capabilities. And if he is uh, depositing and you are connected to him, like you are loyal to your bank, you always go there, you have a relationship with the bank. You are monitoring your account. If we do that to the spiritual, going to the banker, Father, going to withdraw from him, he doesn't run out of his boat. His vote is not like the human vote, the bank vote in real world. No, he doesn't run out of, out of anything. All the resources we have, everything that the bank has, we are depositing, withdrawing. He has an abundance. Is it money? He has an abundance. He says silver and gold belongs to him. Is it wisdom? He has an abundance. He says, if you lack, come and ask me and I'll give it to you. Is it strength? He is the omnipotent God. Powerful powerful what do we need if we choose like nanaya said to go by the self 
I am tired. I am doing this. I am doing that. We will fall under the burden. But if by the power of the spirit, we say, Father, this is the assignment. I will do it. My sister, you will never run dry. And even if you run dry, you know where to go. And each time you run dry and you go, you will be refilled. And you will continue to do good. Let our attitude be like Christ to do it. Carrying a whole cross was no easy thing. Carrying the whole sin of the world was no easy thing. But when you look at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, his strength failed. He got physically exhausted. And he's telling you and I that, yes, there can be times in our life when we will be physically, emotionally, financially, everything spiritually. Our strength can run out. But when we look up to him, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. All glory to Jesus. He is able to. It's up to us to cause our hearts to say, yes, Lord, I will continue. And he will He will give the strength to do it. Stananaya, I don't know whether you want to top up for us. Sister, if what you may see. Yes, I was just, I sent a message, but um, you, you've just okay, summarized so beautifully, so that I've got nothing to add to that. Thank okay, you. that's fine. That's yeah, fine. you summarized so beautifully. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Welcome. I saw, okay, maybe it was, it was a mistake. I thought I saw, um, okay, to me see, all right. So, sisters, I believe the Spirit of God has fed us well and we are full. One thing I would love to say, we will be closing shortly. Think about everything you have heard and draw the line. Would you want to obey Father and do it? And let's remember, our sister said it, he will not give you a burden that will kill you. We need to understand and know who you are working with. One day he told me that plainly. You need to know who you are working with. I trusted him, sir. But the faith journey, there are levels. You will get to a point where he will stretch your, your, your faith beyond where it is. And if you are able to stand, it grows from a, a level to the other. He does that through trials and troubles. It's not an easy thing. So as he's teaching you, you are enjoying the lesson. He will bring the text. If you are able to pass, you move. So he had to remind me. He was coaching me. Know who you are working with. It's like I have, myself, I have even forgotten the one I'm working with and his capabilities because it was a higher level of trusting him for something. By his message, we passed class one, class two, class three. Now you've gotten to the point where but he says, remember, and understand who you are working with. Know who you are working with. I had to look sharp and go back to the test book. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. This is he. Oh, oh, okay. Strength came. My sister, I'm asking you, what have you learned? What are you taking away? Are you going to stand by your way? Are you going to insist? Let me close with us with the scripture. Have we changed our minds that we will work whether we are helped or not? And that's our help is from the Lord, that the Holy Spirit is the only helper, that if we put our trust in man to help us, he said in Jeremiah 17, that Nanaya posted five or something, that we are cursed, but we are, no, we are not the people who are cursed. What are we taking away? Do it as unto the Lord. He says we shouldn't complain. Everything we do, we should not complain. We should do it like we are doing it for the Lord. Did we see the Lord complaining when he was going on the cross? Didn't he have all the right to say that nobody is helping him? Did Jesus ask that somebody should come and help him to carry the cross? No. It was the Roman soldiers. The soldiers. He, they saw that Charlie, this guy, one shakra, that's, that's Gogo Tanukra. Maybe he won't even get there. Because probably he was falling and toppling over the cross. So they had to call Simon. 
that black guy, Simon the, the, the siren or whatever, they called him, you, come and carry the cross and help him. Tired. Tired. Our Lord needs someone to help him to carry his own cross to the, cruci uh, the place of crucifixion. But he never opened his mouth. He did it. And the soldiers realized. When we get to it, if we will align our hearts to the scriptures, in everything, whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and depend upon his person, giving praise to God, the Father, through him. He said he will never leave us as orphans. He has sent us a helper who is the Holy Spirit. The choice is yours and mine to decide to align our hearts to his word we have heard today and say, yes, Lord, I will do it. I will continue. I am willing, but help me is a choice. Or, well, I am tired and I'm human. I don't think I can continue. That one too is a choice. And what happens? I read in Revelations. Each of those choices will come with reward. Each of those choices. I am tired. I can't do this anymore. It will come. He said he will reward that. Yes, I will do it. Help me. He is also going to reward that. So the ball is in our court. It's up to us to make a decision. Sister Joe, I was going to close. I just saw your hand. Hand, sorry. Kindly oh. go ahead. Kindly I'm just adding... God bless you. I'm just adding something small to all that you've said. You know, sometimes it's okay to be, you know, to be tired. It's okay to cry to your father. It's okay to just break down on him. Just let him know you are tired. But then one thing that he's teaching me is that sometimes he tells you to rest and hold on a bit, you know, not in doing good, but doing the chores, even that you just need to be sensitive to the spirit. Sometimes he tells you, you know, you can shelve this a little bit. Nobody is going to <laughs> die. Nothing is going to destroy, you know, just rest, you know, just have rest a little bit. And then you can go ahead with what you are doing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to be tired as a human being. That is what shows that you are but mortal but when we rely on him for strength it's okay to cry to him you know daddy i'm tired i'm, I'm just tired i'm worn out you know what what should we do and then he tells you he directs us so it's okay to cry to him it's okay to you know feel weak in front of him and he, his strength is always available yeah god bless you Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Sister Joe, for adding that. So, my sister, I hope you are blessed. Yes, it's okay to tell him. Honestly, we, we have to be honest with him. He knows he knows us. Even if you don't tell him, he knows. So why would we keep quiet? Let him know you are tired. Let him know you feel like giving up. Let him know you feel like throwing the towel. Be honest with him. He will help you. He will help me. He will help all of us. Nobody is a superhuman being. We draw our strength from him to give you glory. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sisters. Shall we unmute our microphones and share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of God and the sweet Jesus. fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. For no us all the days of our lives. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Sisters, God bless you so much for coming. See you again next week. God willing. Thank you. So 1010 session. We apologize sincerely.